This video will show you how you can animate text entirely from the presets located inside the effects and presets folder inside After Effects. Let's get started. I chopped up the quote into either one word or pairs of two words and created a total of 14 layers so that I can animate those separately. So take notice there are 14 layers here and each layer has its associated timeline. Part of what I'm going to do is adjust as in trim the timelines so that the words appear when I want them to appear. So what I'm going to do is animate this entire quote using only text effects and presets. I am using the text workspace. Um, I want to show you if these folders are not open, you might open up this panel and if you don't see it, you can get it from the window drop down right here. And it might look like this. If it does and you're looking for the text presets, don't be fooled by this text folder here. That's not the one we're looking for. We have to go inside animation presets and then we have to go inside that text folder. Then we have a whole bunch of folders here and I often use the presets that are located inside anime in and anime out. For this project, we're going to use only anime in. So the first thing I'm going to do is select that first layer. And I want to use the typewriter effect. That is located down here. There's two things you can do. You can double click to apply it, or I'm going to Command Z, undo that. Or this does the same thing. You could click and drag it on top of the text element that you want to apply it to. Both do the same thing. And you might think, oh, what happened? It didn't work. It's gone, but it totally worked. It applied the preset at wherever your time indicator was. And mine is at zero right here. So I'm going to go ahead and play. The space bar is a shortcut to play. And it's showing us what that particular preset is doing. So as you can see, that's what they mean by typewriter. Uh, if I hit the space bar again, that stops. The thing that I'm probably going to do with every single one of these presets is I want them to move faster. So I'm going to open up that folder and take a look at this preset. It came in as animator one. That's often the default name that comes in when you apply a preset. Sometimes they'll come in with the actual preset name, which I wish is what they always did. So if I open that up and you often have to open up another folder called range selector, then you can see, aha, there's my animation. So it's a preset, meaning it's already animated for you. It's already turned on and it popped in those keyframes. I will scrub my time indicator from point A to point B. From that first keyframe to the second keyframe, there's my animation. This is what I often do. I get in there and I click on that second keyframe and I pull it way in so that it's a much faster effect. So let's watch that. Something that I tend to do and I think is a good practice is to rename Animator 1 as to what the actual preset is. And the way to do that is you can right click on that layer and click rename. The shortcut to do that is to hit the enter key. So I'll go ahead and now I won't wonder what did I add here. Now I'm going to close that layer and the next thing I'm going to do, just in anticipation that each one of these timelines I'm about to animate, and I will go faster as we get going, um, I'm going to select this timeline. I'm holding down the shift key so I can select all but the first timeline. And I'm looking for that double arrow and I'm trimming. I'm getting these out of the way. So now if I click play, that's all we have until it reaches all those other timelines. So let's go to the next layer too. Now I will pull that timeline back in, guessing at maybe around one second I'll want it to appear. You also have to remember to always pull that time indicator back in, um, unless you want it to start somewhere else. But I want all my animations to start when uh, the timeline begins. So I'll open up two, um, just so I can see what's, I do actually like to open up the text because I know that's where the animation will pop in underneath this text layer. Let's go over and try a different one. So let's try something called slide and pop in. Here it is. I'll double click to apply it and then I can play to see what it looks like. 
yeah, I like that. But once again, I want it to be much faster. So over here, I can see all this stuff popped in. I know that I can see that these are signifying that's where the action happened. I'll open up position in by character. And then I also need to open up animation. And now I know I'm inside the right thing when I see a blue stopwatch because that means an animation has been turned on. And I can see that my keyframes have now taken that diamond shape. So I'll click on that second keyframe and tuck it right in. I might even bring it in faster. Then I'll close up that layer. That's a lot to look at. And we'll go down to the next word. I'll pull this in. And I'm kind of guessing right now at the timing, this is something I would finesse at the end. Let's open up Kinds, that layer. And I think I'll go ahead and do the typewriter effect for that one too. Um, here's a nice shortcut. Because I know I like to shorten, or I should say quicken the typewriter effect, I can go copy what I did. And I know that I liked what I did with there are. So click on the typewriter. I'm going to Command C to copy that, then select Kinds and Command V to paste. So it went in and pasted that animation with the correction or the change that I made. If I drag and slide, I want to show you this. It will take the keyframes with it, which I like, <laughs> if I like where the keyframes are. If I just trim, the keyframes don't move with it, then I have to go select the keyframes separately. When I drag, and it keeps the keyframes uh, attached to it, you'll notice it'll also uh, drag the end of it in. It's not a huge deal to the end because I can like go ahead and adjust the end. Let me close that. So what I'm doing is tightening everything up and then I'll worry about the end later. This is a little faster. So I'll press again, a little better. Actually, I even want to bring that in. I want all of that to come in a lot faster. I and mean, we kind of read fast, better. Let's go to people. Here's that timeline. So now I'll bring that in somewhere around here, get that time indicator lined up. And let's try a new effect for people. How about, let's try slide in by line. You press play, you can see what it looks like. Yeah, I like that, but once again, it's slow. So let's make that faster. There, now I can see the keyframe. Bring that way in. And I'll press play to see what I have so far. Not bad, maybe it's even too fast. So I'll adjust it a little bit. I'll close that layer. Let's go to in this. Let's bring that one in. Let's do the slide and pop in for this one. Press play, it's showing you what it's doing. There we go, I like that. I need to open that up so I can make that look a lot faster. There. I know I wanna apply this exact same thing to my next layer. So I will copy position in by character in is what it's calling it. I'll close that, select the next layer, world, and apply. Those is my next one. Bring that in, move my time indicator to the beginning of the timeline. And for this one, I'd like to try fade up and flip. This is a fun one. Yeah, that's a cool effect. Uh, let's see, is that fast enough? Yeah, almost. I actually could live with that if I tuck this timeline in. Then I might not need to adjust the keyframes. Sure, I can live with that. So let's go to the next layer. Who? We'll drag that timeline out. And line up the indicator. And you know what? Maybe I just won't apply anything to this one. You know, sometimes we don't have to, right? Um, it's just too much going on. So I'm good with that. Now I'm gonna pull out the next one, uh, divide. Slide up by character might be cool. Right here. This is what it looks like. There we go. Yeah, I like that. I do wanna quicken it a little. So I need to open up the animation slide up by character folder and then probably it's under that range selector so now i can push in that keyframe that might be too fast let's see maybe a little too fast so you can just keep scrubbing and playing to see the time i'm okay with that now 
everything into two is the next one. Um, lining things up. Oh, so you can even see right here it hasn't finished. So, well, maybe I won't mind staggering it, but I'll bring that in a bit. Yeah, that might be a good place to start everything into two. And I'll apply the typewriter one to this. So there's my typewriter effect. Just too slow. I really don't know why they make it so slow. I'll go in and scoot that in quite a bit. That might be fast enough for me now. Yeah, I like that. Close that. We're getting there. And those, I'll bring that one out. Oh, why not do, I can't resist doing the one I did for divide. That's a fun one. I'll copy that one. That's why I'm going back into divide. I'm gonna command C. And then make sure I got my timeline where I want it to be and paste. Let's check that out. Now let's go to who. Let's bring that one out. Oops, maybe right here. Line up that time indicator. And, and why not just have a simple appearance? <laughs> Let's not add anything to that one. Uh, I'll pull out the next line, which is don't. What kind of effect might I like for that? Oh, here we go, slide and pop in. I might not mind it if I just move the timeline up. Yeah, I like that much better. That rubble's done. Now I need to go ahead and credit Gloria Steinem for this awesome quote. And maybe I'll just have that fade in. There's a lot of nice little fade presets that save you time. You know, otherwise you'd be in there fussing with um, opacity. I'll slow fade on is plenty for that. Nothing too crazy. Double click. And let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's kind of nice. I actually don't mind it being slow because then I'll just let it play out to the end of, I think it's 15 seconds that I chose for my setting. And I'm just um, fixing the ends of my timelines. So let's play the whole thing. Let's see what happens. There are definitely things I want to fuss around with and fix, but I don't want to make this video insanely long. Now you have the tools you need to go in and try your own versions. It's a really cool thing to think about what kind of emphasis you want on which words. Uh, really, I, I probably would go back and finesse the fact that if I were to read this, I would say there are two kinds of people in this world. Those who divide everything into two and those who don't. So I would probably go back through and think about that timing, the beats that I hear when I read it and do a little finessing.